Hello everyone, hopefully we should be live on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you all so much for joining us. I can see we've got lots of comments coming in already. So hello to Maxine, hello to Julie, hello to Sharon, Jan. Thank you all so much for joining me so far. Um, we've had a couple of technical issues because the camera keeps strobing when we go to the overhead to show you how to use the ink pads. So we're going to have a very technical day today. Rebecca's going to go and switch the light off when we put the overhead on. <laughs> so that's going to be great fun. So thank you everyone for joining me for the launch today of our fabulous um, blending brushes, which I've got my set here. And these are gorgeous. Now, if you've been on our YouTube channel earlier today, you may have seen a little sneak peek at these, but they are absolutely fabulous. So you've got your beautiful raspberry pink, of course, brushes. Okay, that are absolutely perfect for blending your ink pads with. So they've got a lovely smooth plastic handle and they've also got a flexible neck to them. So it makes it really, really easy for you to get the pressure right as you're blending. They are honestly just beautiful to use. They've got the perfect doming to the um, bristles here so that it makes the blend really nice and smooth. And they also, the bristles are white so that you can see what colour you've got on here. Because I know you can get um, kind of brown bristled brushes, but you can't necessarily see what colour's on the brush then. Um, and when you feel these, they are so super duper soft and so densely packed with the little bristles, with the bristles as well. So they are absolutely fabulous. Now we knew that if you're going for the brushes, you were going to want something to store them in. So we've got our fabulous little storage holder, which is fab. I'm going to bring you this one in actually, because it's a little bit more empty so that I can talk about it to you all. But you've got your lovely plastic um, little storage tray with your Chloe's Creative Cards logo on the front. That's printed in raspberry pink. And then you've got this lovely silicon kind of jelly insert that you can push your tools into. Okay. And we did that in black for a couple of different reasons. So the first one is if you've got any of our storage binders, you know that the storage binders are black, raspberry pink and gold. So this is going to tie in really nicely with those. And we also did it in black. So if you get any ink or anything like that on there, it's not going to stain the silicon inside. And um, so they're absolutely fabulous. So these are dead easy. All you do is just push the brushes in and they just hold. But not only are they fab for your brushes, I love putting my tools in mine. So I have my scissors in, my little pokey tool, my glue, my tweezers and a uh, um, picking up tool and you can see how they just fit in there but it's so nice and neat and compact to keep on your desk it keeps all your tools like to hand so so easy to use and of course you can pop your blending brushes into here you can fit like pens pencils and um, any of your other little tools and things you might have you can be slotting into here, which is fabulous. And like I say, when you're working with this on your desk, it just makes it easier because all of your tools at the hand. And if you're anything like me, I'm just looking for my chisel tip glue pen actually, because so that's fixed in as well. Um, have a look. Um, I'm having Becca just throwing it across the room at me there. <laughs> um, so your chisel tip glue pens will slot in as well, which is fab. So you can see how much you can be packing into here and obviously it's going to be perfect for just standing on your desk, your tools at the hand. So if you're like, oh, I need my pokey tool, it's really easy just to grab it out, drop it back in. And if you've watched any of my lives, you know that I lose my tools all the time. This helps keep you organised. And if you go into a craft class or a crop, and maybe you've got, do you know like the, the, um, the bags with the handles on and the pockets around the side? You could just pick this up and drop it in and it's good to go. And then you set up in the same way that you are at home. So it's absolutely fabulous. So the brush holders are available on their own. Brush holders and desk storage, really. It's a bit more than just a brush holder. Um, and these are $7.99 each. They are absolutely fab. So I have one for my brushes and then one for my tools. So I have two on my desk. Um, and then obviously, if you're using just your, your tools, you can keep your tools out and pop your brushes away. But even then, they look really lovely, all just displayed in your craft room as well, um, which is always nice. So that is your tool holder and your brush storage. 
and we've also got our gorgeous blending brushes now i'm going to talk to you more about these as we demo them today's demos i'm not going to be making a full card i'm just going to be showing you how to use these and lots and lots of different inky techniques okay and different ways that you can be using them so the brushes come in a pack of five like this and they are 12.99 for the five or we do have a bundle on the website where you get two packs of the brushes so you get 10 brushes in total and a desktop storage for 29.99 so let me pop the graphic in for you there there we go so you can see that one there that is your storage brush and store storage brush i meant to put blending brush on that graphic should be blending brush and storage i need it all collection the RIP will be $33.97, but the bundle price is $29.99, which is fabulous. So I'm going to pop the camera back in. There we go. Okay. And you can see you're going to be able to use these in so many different ways. The brushes are fabulous for doing the centers of your flowers and things. And we have been kind of um, teasing this for a little while. Leslie's asking, can you tilt it forward to the size of the holes? There we go. It's a little bit hard to see probably because obviously it, it's um, black in colour. But the holes actually stretch so you can fit different sizes of things in and that's how it's been designed. So it fits in and then it holds perfectly. Okay. So that is your storage and your blending brushes. Now not only have we got those as a brand new on the website today, we also have the fabulous stamen die set now this came about through you guys asking for it so we've been including the stamen dies in lots of our flower stamp and die sets and you have been absolutely loving them they add like a real nice dimension to your project and they are fabulous but they were individual little dies and we were talking about it and it was like they're great but it's a bit frustrating when you have to keep running one through at a time Quite often, you maybe lose one of them because they are quite small dies with them being flower centres. So, we had a little think about it and we've done it so we've got them all on one die plate here. So, when you run this through, you are going to be able to cut out six of the stamens at once, okay, in one pass through your die cutting machine. And I'm going to show you how to use this in a little bit. We'll do some die cutting with it. Um, but it's going to make it so much easier. And do you know, if you've got a little square scrap of card, or maybe it's just like the DL off cuts from when you do your 8x8, pop it on here, run it through your die cutting machine, and then you can keep a little box of the stamens, and they are just ready to go on your project. So it's a really, really lovely one um, for doing things like that. Of course, if you've got other stamps that maybe aren't our flower stamps at all, you can then be adding the stamens into the middle of those too. So it's a really nice, versatile die. Or maybe if you've just got stamps where the flowers have ju are just stamps on their own and they haven't got the die set with them, again, you can be using these to create those beautiful 3D centres. So that is the stamen die set. Let me put the little graphic in for that one hopefully i've not spelled anything wrong on here so we've got the stamen metal die set and this one is 9.99 so really good value as well it's a nice size of die and what we've also done is we've put plenty of release holes in the back of the metal so if you need to push them through and poke them out it's much much easier and um, because you've got the re release holes in the metal but it's all in one piece so you get six in one okay the sizes of the stamens as well i have actually listed on the website so hop over to chloescreativecards.co.uk and you'll see all of the details on there of the different sizes of the stamens across. Okay then, so what we are going to do is we're going to start off by having a little look at the blending brushes. So just pulled all of my tools out of my storage and I'm just going to pop these back in and I'm going to pop the overhead camera on. So let me pop that on now. There we go, and um, that's that. There we go. Okay then, so we just get all these bits and pieces in here. Sorry if it just went a little bit darker there. We've just knocked the light off, because for some reason this, the camera above me keeps strobing when we put the, the um, when we go to the overhead one. No idea why, but anyway. Right then, so today is gonna be all about some techniques. So we're going to start off by using the lovely um this is the summer flower summer flower this one um this is the just the stamp on its own and i'm going to show you how you can ink the centers of this one 
So I've used our beautiful rose quartz pearl paper to stamp and emboss this one onto. And I've stamped it in my wild clear embossing ink pad. And I've popped my opaque bright white super fine embossing powder over the top. Heated it up and cut this one out. So what you can then do is grab your blending brushes. So I've, what I've tended to do is keep one for kind of each colour family. If you want to keep one for each colour, that's absolutely fine. Of course you can do. Um, but I've tended to find one for each colour family is okay. The only thing I would say to be a little bit careful of is maybe with your paler colours. So for example, if you're going to use a tattered rose or a squeezed lemonade, maybe um, keep your blending brush for just that colour because when they are pale obviously you don't want to get cross contamination between the colours. So I'm going to take my Distress Ink, the one that I'm using today is Warm Lipstick, I'm going to ink up my brush by doing some little circles in the middle and you can always just tap off on a little bit of paper if you want to be, just get your confidence as to how much ink is on there. Then literally just do circles in the middle of the flowers, I'm not even really putting much pressure on that brush. Just letting the brush do the work. I'm going to blend it out. Like so. Okay. And then you would take a little bit of kitchen roll. Give it a little rub over the top. Because we've embossed it, it'll resist. And then when we lift that up, you can see the depth that's been added to that flower. So if I hold it against this uh, against a plain one, you can see the difference that that then makes by just adding that little bit more depth and dimension to your flowers. So I'm going to continue on doing this with the flowers. And what you have got with these as well, just notice I've got a bit of ink on the top, the necks are really nice and flexible. So what that means is it's really easy for you to ink because it helps you to control the pressure. And this is something that we've been really specific about because when we're bringing any tools or anything like blending brushes, it has to be perfect. It has to be right. The, by having the flexibility in the neck as well, you can also pop your index finger on the brush if you want to get a bit more inten intense kind of ink on there. So you can just over lightly like this. I need a little bit more ink on my brush and build your colour really lightly, or if you really want to get your colour on there quick, you can pop your finger on the back of the brush and press down, and that's gonna give you more intense colour. So you can see how beautifully these work. So then again, rub over with your kitchen roll. And again, circular motion, really, really easy to do. Like so, just adding that bit of depth to the middle of the flower. Give it a little rub, and there we go. That is your beautiful flower all inked up. So what we can then do is start to layer up our design. So I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim to the center of the flower like so. So just trim in between the petals, and what that then does is it gives you the most fabulous kind of bit of movement to be able to shape the flower. So we're just going to work our way around, trimming into here. Okay. And then we're going to pinch down the center like so. So we're doing that little valley fold technique again. Just pinching down the middle and then you'll see how this creates the most lovely shape for your flower design. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of our PVA glue little dot in the middle, pull the petals up towards you, pop that down in the middle, there we go, like so, okay, 
it and you can see how fabulous that then looks. And you can see by adding that ink, the depth and dimension that that's given to the flower, it's just gonna help to take them to the next level. And do you know what would be even nicer in the middle of here? One of the gorgeous stamens. So I'm gonna die cut that out. So I'm gonna use my Gemini. So I'm gonna use my base plate, my metal, I'm gonna put my metal shim in because it's quite a detailed die. My plastic shim on the top and then my stamen die set. And I'm going to cut this one out with some mirror card. I'm going to take a piece here. This is our rose quartz mirror card. I'm going to pop that over the top. Pop my cutting plate on the top of there and run this through my Gemini. We have had a couple of questions as well this week asking if our products work in the Gemini 2. They do. So if you've got a Gemini 2, from what I've done so far, the plate combinations are pretty much the same. Um, if you've got the original Gemini as well. So, grab this out the other side, and then when we lift this away, you'll see we've got these beautiful stamen. Now, these are some of the designs that have been included with the other um, previous stamp and die sets, but you guys all asked for them as just kind of an individual die, just for the stamen, which I think is fab. So, just push this one out. It hasn't quite cut through. I maybe needed my magnetic. There we go. Okay, and then what we can do is decide what size we want in the middle of our flower. So maybe it's going to pop that one in. It's that one, I think. Maybe it's that one. So this is where you can start to get creative and build these up. So let me grab. What I like to do is take the little. Um stamen and pull them up towards you like so just by rolling them between your fingers and then stick that one down in the middle like so then we'll take the next one pop this one on the top so and I like to build these up so you can build a little bit of dimension with them as well and then take this even smaller one Again, pull those little stamen up, add a blob of glue in the, in the middle and drop that into the centre. Okay, you can then be taking a little jewel from one of the bling boxes. So actually, I might take a pearl. Let's do a pearl from Chloe's favourites for a change. Let's do one of the nice magenta pink ones. Let's pop a little blob of glue in there. Grab my tweezers. Pop that in the middle. Like so, and if I hold that up, hopefully you can see how beautiful that stamen then looks in the middle of the flower. So really, really pretty just for taking these to the next level. So that's one way that you can be using these fabulous blending brushes. Another way is, of course, they are going to work on vellum as well. And if you haven't been on the website, I know that lots of you have been waiting for it. Our white vellum is back in stock, everyone. I know it has been a while, but it is now back in stock. So I've done some of the same flower again, and I've done these onto just some white vellum. So again, I've taken my um, Wild Clear Embossing Ink Pad, inked up my stamp, stamped it down, covered the image with the opaque bright white super fine embossing powder, heated that up, and then we've cut out the flowers. And again, I'm going to show you how it inked these up. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do this one. So it's completely up to you. You can either work on the front or back of vellum. If you work on the front, it's the same technique as we just did before. You just need to take a piece of kitchen roll and give it a little rub over afterwards. Or if you want to work on the back, which is probably better, you're going to get a softer colour, but you're also going to get your embossing powder popping through. So for example, I'm going to take my wilted violet distress oxide this time and i'm using distress oxides today we do now have these on the website and they are beautiful they're like the most gorgeous kind of creamy pigmented ink and they blend beautifully so i would definitely recommend adding a few of these into your stash if you haven't already got some so literally starting from the center of the flower circular motions okay so it looks Looks a little bit messy right now when you flip that over look at how beautiful and soft that lens looks 
So if you are buying white vellum, you can then start to tint it with your inks to colour it, which is really lovely. So again, same on this one, little circular motions. Just on the back like so. And then when we flip that over, again, you've got that beautiful soft colouring in the middle of the flower. And it's, again, so, so easy to do. The brushes are doing the hard work for you. And I'm not really applying much pressure at all. Literally, just rubbing round in a circle. Like so. And then you can see, let do a little bit more on this one. You can then start to spread the ink a little bit further out if you want to. But then you can see how beautiful that then looks just to tint the middle of the flowers. So, then again, what you can do is you can get shape in these. So snip into the middle with your scissors. Like so. And you can pinch down the middle. So I'm creating a little mountain this time down the centre of the petal. blob of glue in the middle and then we're going to pull the petals up towards like this and then place that down and then the same with this one here And then pop that down. So you can just give that a little twist just to kind of get that into position. But then you can see how beautiful that then looks. And then if you want to, you can of course be adding a little stamen into the middle of this one. With the vellum, you do just have to give it a few seconds just to grab with your dries clear glue. But you can press down in the middle, give it a good squish, and that'll help it to bond. Sometimes if you find with the curling up and things, you're using far too much glue. You only need a small amount, especially with the art glitter, because it is very strong. Right, I'm going to grab in, so we'll do matte mirror on this one. This is our amethyst matte mirror card. I'm going to use this time. I'm going to pop my magnetic shim into my Gemini as well this time. Um, because this is a slightly more detailed die, and I just think it will match a little bit better by adding that in. Right, so we're going to take our base plate. We're going to slot in the magnetic. I throw a plastic shim on the top. I'm going to take our dab, put the side up with our lovely card on the top, and then we're going to run that through our die cutting machine. Like so. Oh, I can see a few people are on holiday, having a little dip in the pool. That sounds very lovely, I have to say. Right, so we're going to grab this at the other side. This is die cut out perfectly. There we go. You can see that there. Okay, I'll just all push through. Okay, and then you have got the little release holes in the back of the die. So if any of your paper or card gets stuck in, you can just give it a little, little poke and it'll come out. Right then. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take the stem and die again. So I might just actually, you can just pop one in if you want. So I'm going to, again, pull those little petals up towards me. Little blob of glue in the middle. Should we put two in? I'm going to put two in. I'm going to put the big one in, just to be different. 
Right, so we're going to pop that one down first. And we'll put this one on the top. And the stamens look beautiful as well. If you go around and just add a little bit of sparklicious glitter on each of the points, <gasps> they look so, so pretty, so twinkly when the light catches them. Okay, so we're going to put a little blob of glue in the middle of there. I'm going to take a little bling stone. I'm just going to pop an AB one in the middle of this one. It's going to get stuck there. Then you see how gorgeous that then looks. Really, really pretty. Okay. Now, another technique that you can be doing with the blending brushes is, if you want to, you can blend two colours together on the back of the vellum to give you like a two-tone look with your flowers. So, I'm going to take my spiced marmalade and kitsch flamingo what a fabulous name grab my two brushes in for that one so um, i've got my orange brush and my pink brush then going to take my spiced marmalade i'm going to start in the center of the flower just work our way out like so we go so I'm working on the back of the vellum again then a little bit of ink in the middle and just working out like so then you can take your gorgeous kitsch flamingo which is the most beautiful vibrant pink and start from your outer edge and just work in. Then when I flip this over, you'll have like an ombre, an ombre flower. Pop that against some white. You might be able to see that a little bit better. But how fabulous does that look? By using the two colours, really, really lovely. So, we're gonna just take our ink Ink the edges of the petals. Like so. Okay, and you can see that is looking fabulous okay so then when we flip those over you've got these beautiful ombre flowers okay and again same technique snip to the middle okay and then we're going to layer these up and i've got a little stamen that's been glittered so we'll pop that one in the middle of this one and you'll see what a difference that then makes too so you're going to just snip to the center of the flower like so and you're going to pinch down the middle Okay, and then you're going to pop a bit of glue in the middle. Linda's asking, do you need to wash the blenders now and again? I've not washed mine yet. I've had mine quite a few months. Um, but if you did wash them, you can just wash them in a bit of um, washing up liquid and water. Reshape the bristles and leave them to air dry, like you would with makeup brushes, really. Um, but I've not bothered washing mine. I think as you get a little bit more ink built up on them, actually, it's really good because then it kind of holds the colour. So then if you just want to put a little bit of a light inking on, you can, which I quite like. So, I'm going to layer this up. Okay. 
like so. And then we're going to take our gorgeous little stamen. And if I hold that up, can you just see how the edges have just been glittered with a little bit of diamante sparkle glitter? Really, really pretty. So then we can pull that up towards us and stick that down in the centre of the flower. And then you can see how pretty that then looks. It almost looks like a cherry blossom kind of centre. But you can see how you've got the orange and the pink, which is so, so pretty on the flowers. Just a different way to use them too. So that's three ways to start with. Next up, uh, what should we do next? Oh, I want to show you the butterflies. So again, I've done some butterflies on vellum as well. So if you wanted to get, this is our gorgeous um, brand new botanical butterfly, which is a really nice large one. So again, the same technique as with the flowers, you can blend two colours together. So for example, if I take the peacock feathers, this one. if I take a little bit of peacock feathers and ink, maybe it's from the middle. I'm going to ink from the centre out like this. And what I'm doing when I'm inking is I'm kind of following the shape of the stamp. If that makes sense. So again, I'm working on the back of the vellum. But this makes it so, so easy to colour your images as well. And um, especially if you're doing things like this onto vellum. And then if I grab my other blending brush, this one's my speckled egg one. Pick up a little bit of ink and you can work from the outer edges. Blend it in. So I'm just kind of overlapping a little bit in the middle just to make sure that that middle part gets covered. And when you flip that over, can you see the two tone on the butterfly, which is really lovely? Or even if you just want to leave it coloured in the middle, you could do as well. But again, the white vellum is fabulous. Our vellum is perfect for stamping on, perfect for shaping your flowers and all such like as well. It's brilliant and it is back in stock now on the website. So if we flip those over, you can then see how that works. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So then again, you can be layering the butterflies together. So a little crease down the middle little bit of glue and then stick those down like so and you can see how fab that then looks so that's another little way to use your blending brushes okay another thing that you can do as well is if you've got any of our gorgeous dies such as the beautiful decorative circles that we launched last week you can do some inky frames with them so i've run this through my die cutting machine but left my card in the die okay and then i'm going to take i'll take sponge sugar because it's a nice pale one so then if i take my sponge sugar distress oxide and my blending brush i can again start by just inking all the way around the edge and all i'm doing is just trying to keep small circular motions Going all the way around like this. So you can ink all the way around and it doesn't look like you've got all that much ink on to start with but you can kind of just blend your way around and then when you pop this out you'll see you've then created the most beautiful blended inky frame around the edge of that shape which is gorgeous it just adds an extra dimension to your projects which is really nice too 
Okay, something else that you can be doing is if you've got our gorgeous um, sugared pastel foiled paper pad, if you flick to the back, you see we've got some papers that look white, but they've got like an oil on water um, foiling off. So they are perfect for inking. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm grabbing a clean piece of paper and try to use nice and kind of brighter colours as well so that you can really pick this up on the camera. So I'm going to take a bit of peeled, we'll do peeled paint. Maybe he's into a bit of dried marigold. I don't know, green and orange. It's a controversial one, but we'll give it a go. There's a little bit of dried marmalade in there. Not dried marigold in there as well, just to blend it. Yeah, that'll be all right. So we're going to use the three colours. So I'm going to start off with my peeled paint, which is a lovely kind of vibrant greeny colour. And we're going to just ink over. And you can see by, again, small circular motions, that is all that you need to do with these to get that ink on there. Again, ink over the design like so. Working round and round in little circles. Just going in there. Again, I'm not really putting much pressure on that blending brush if you want to darken it you can go in and press on the head to get more more ink on there like so it's got a little bit of green up here as well maybe but you can see how beautiful and smooth these are so next up, I'm going to take my Spiced Marmalade Distress Ink. Again, ink up my brush and blend over the top. So just going to work around, inking this up, adding that colour onto the paper. Like so. Okay, and then we're going with the lightest colour, which is that lovely dried marigold. Pick that up on the brush and then buff that in as well. And again, you can really see how beautifully this colour blends. Like so. so then what you would do is take your kitchen roll in, just a dry piece of kitchen roll and buff over the top. What that's going to do is it's going to lift off any of the ink that may be sat on top of the foiling. So then when we hold that up, you will see how that has then resisted where that gorgeous foiling is. So that's another way that you could be using these. Um, I'm just full of ideas today really so more ways that you can be using these over your embossing folders this is a sneak peek at an embossing folder coming soon but I'm going to show you it anyway so um, we can take our gorgeous distressing so for example this is a speckled egg so then all you're going to do is just take your brush and lightly buff over the top Like so, and this will then start to help reveal the design. So you can use this to add the colour onto your designs like so, which is fab. Oh, I've got inky fingers, look. We'll just blend it in, it'll all look fabulous, I'm sure. There we go. So you can see how gorgeous that then looks on your embossing folders. Just to make that embossing pop, it looks so, so good on your embossing folders. 
And then another way you can use these brushes is to stencil. So I've got one of our border dies here. This is the um, floral lace border, floral lace border. If you've looked at some of the pictures online, you may have seen a sneak peek at a new die set because I did use one of the new leafy lace dies on there. And if I can find my low tack tape, I'm going to just take my low tack tape. And tape my design down tape at the bottom and then tape it at the top when I tape at the top I'm going to pull it it's nice and tight like this okay and then you can take your distressing again uh, what should we go for scattered straw maybe just this one here this is a lovely yellow I've been using this one a lot actually I really like it so then you can just buff over like this or actually you can blend a couple of colours together if you want to as well let me show you that but you can see like so I'll just by getting that ink onto there Okay, and then you can maybe take a little bit of that spiced marmalade. Love this one as well. Add a little bit of that onto there too. So and then you can just work through, stenciling through the design. And when we lift that away, you can of course do this with your stencils as well. But when you lift that away, you've got your gorgeous border that's all nicely inked, really pretty for one project. And then you've got the resist, which gives you this beautiful stenciled background for another project, which is really nice too. So that's another way that you can use your blending brushes. Of course, you can just use them to literally blend in backgrounds as well. So you can take a couple of different colours. So I'll go for picked raspberry and maybe use a little bit of spun sugar. And that's two in the same family. You can just take a couple of them. Um, well, oh, I've just put the wrong brush in the wrong ink pad. It was bound to happen. There we go. Bit of spun sugar to start with. So it's a really nice soft pale pink. Like this. And again, if you want to make it more intense, you can put more pressure on that brush. I'm then going to take my picked raspberry. I was going to call it pickled. Don't know why. You can blend a little bit of that in. Like so, but you can see how these brushes just blend beautifully together. But then you could be stamping onto this if you wanted to. You could be doing some of your embossing techniques onto it as well. Add a little bit of orange into here to kind of make it pop a little bit more. But you can see how you can just start to layer up all of your colours. Like so. But still, they blend absolutely beautifully together. Like this. There we go. So then that could be a beautiful inky background ready to go on another project. So there is loads that you can be doing with these beautiful blending brushes. So just to give you a little recap, some of the techniques that we've covered today. We have got, of course, our beautiful inky background that we've just done. We've got our lovely stencil design that we've created with one of our die cuts. We've got our lovely die cut that we've inked over the top of. We've got an embossing folder that we've inked up. We've got our beautiful patterned paper that we've used to do a resist. 
and then this is what for me makes these really special is inking up your flowers so we've got the beautiful ombre one that we've done in um pink and orange onto white vellum and then we've got the gorgeous butterfly where we've inked the inside and the outside edges a different colour. We've done the one where we've just inked the centre of the white vellum to give it like an ombre effect. And then we've also done one on 12 pearl paper, inked it up and popped some stamen in the middle. Now, if you've got our gorgeous pastel sorbet paper pad as well, this takes the ink absolutely beautifully. I would recommend this one if you want to do your flowers. It is fabulous. You want to be able to ink up the middles with these and it really does take the ink nicely. So one more thing that I wanted to show you that you can do is you can do like a resist technique onto card as well with your, um, your inks and your stamps. So I'm going to just grab... A baby wipes have got ink all over my fingers. I'm in a right inky mess today and I'm not used to this. I'm used to being covered in glitter rather than ink. Right. So we're going to take our anti-static bag, dust over our card, and then I'm going to take my flower border stamp. So this one's just come back into stock actually. It's a really lovely large DL stamp, perfect for creating flower borders. And we're going to take our Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad. We're going to ink up the design like so. So lots of light tapping all over the image. So to do this technique, you can either use clear embossing powder or white, like I'm going to use now. I'll pop that down onto my card and press. You want firm even pressure all over the image. I'm just going to stand up to stamp this one because it's quite a large one. Lift that off. And then we're going to take a bit of scrap paper and we'll take our opaque, bright white, super fine embossing powder. Oh, oh my word, I nearly knocked that big jar over there. A little bit of ink on there. Just dust that away. I'm going to pop this back into the jar. Like so, and then I'm going to heat this up. So we're going to hold that heat gun still. As soon as you see that embossing powder start to melt and change, I'm just going to move the heat gun over the image. Probably not the most exciting thing to watch as it's white on white embossing, but So just give that a little minute, just to cool down a little bit. Okay, and then we'll go in with our inks. So, I'll start with a bit of peeled paint to go along the bottom. So I'm going to just take a little bit of this and just brush the ink under here. Like so. We can create like a sunset or a sunrise kind of background with this one. Okay, 
like so. So that's the bottom bit inked. And then we can start and maybe add in a couple of other colours. So I'm going to put a little bit of orange next to the green, I think. So we'll go spiced marmalade. Again, inking up. And then we'll take a little bit of this. Just ink this over the top. Like so these brushes are a really nice size as well because you can get into detailing but you've also got that flexibility that you can kind of um, cover a larger area with them as well, which is really nice. So I'm going to blend those two together like that. Then to remove a bit of pink next. So we'll go for a bit of picked raspberry or pickled, whichever way you, whichever you prefer to call it. A little bit of picked raspberry next. Across like so. And blend that in. I feel like this is going to be quite a tropical looking sky. And go back over with that orange to blend together. Like so. And then you can maybe go in with a bit of scattered straw, a bit of yellow. Scattered straw next, just to keep this all blending, keep it moving nicely, like so. And a little bit of pink up there. To that yellow. Sorry, I will be here all day doing this. I absolutely love doing anything like this. I find it so relaxing. And I'm going to just do scattered straw in this top section here. So we'll just work down, inking up. So then we can just work down. And just get a little bit more ink in there. And go on just to press that down a little bit. But then you can see how gorgeous that then looks. And then if we turn that round, again, a little bit of kitchen roll, just to buff that ink off the top of the embossing. But then you can see how fabulous that then looks. You can obviously spend a little bit more time blending than I did as well. I'd maybe just go up a little bit higher even with the little bit of the pink maybe. You can just keep going. Like so. Anyway, I will be here all day. <laughs> so that is how you can use your different blending brushes. So I think, Becca, could you put the light back on please? Thank you. I was just explaining at the start of the video, the video starts to flicker and scroll and um, straw when we have the, the light off. Uh, when we have the light on, sorry. So those are our fabulous new blending brushes. So we've shown you lots of different ways to use them today. So you've got your blending brushes and your storage, both of which are available on the website now. I'm going to just pop my, my brushes back in and then I can show you um this all together two seconds because i've got a right mess on my desk here let me just have a second to tidy up there we go Put one in there there we go so this is our gorgeous for lending brushes and storage so the brushes are available in a pack of five for 12.99 and the little storage stand is 7.99 or we've got a bundle where you get 10 brushes in total and the stand for 29.99 is a fabulous buy and it's going to look gorgeous just in your craft room isn't it it's always nice to have a little bit of color and of course that um the little storage device is perfect for popping your tools in as well so i have one for my tools and one for my blending brush and then you can really easily see where everything is on your desk as well which helps massively because it helps to keep you organized and tidy 
So not only have we got those as brand new on the website today, we've also got the gorgeous stamen die set. So this is a die that's all in one, that's gonna cut six stamens in one pass through your die cutting machine. And they are gonna come out absolutely beautifully. Perfect for using in the centers of your flowers and all such like really, really lovely. Oh, I guess you could probably put them on little stems as well and make flowers out of the stamens if you really wanted to. So that was today's Facebook Live. Oh, the stamen die set's $9.99 as well, just in case anyone's wondering. So that was today's Facebook Live. I really hope that you have enjoyed that. Today was a little bit different, a bit more technique -y, showing you different things that you can do and how you can get creative with the products. So everything is available right now on the website. So hop over to chloescreativecards.co.uk where you will be able to shop all of the brand new products and I will see you again very, very soon. Thank you all for joining me and have a fabulous bank holiday weekend. See you soon. Bye.